let's continue where we left the previous module. In the previous module, I mentioned that we'll be looking at how to create a pivot chart. Just like a pivot table, pivot charts are very easy to work with. So let's start off by clicking on the pivot table. When you click on a pivot table, the pivot table option appears. And over here in the tools section, you see that there is the pivot chart option. If I click on the pivot chart, we have a number of charts that can be created with the click of a button. But you really need to make sure what makes sense for this particular data set. Column charts are very easy to understand and create. In the column charts, you have the clustered column option. If you click on the chart, you can see how exactly would the chart look like. So you will have the sum of revenue in blue, the sum of quantity in orange, and the sum of total contract value in gray. Now it's important to understand that we have the sum of quantity, the sum of revenue, and the total contract value in this pivot table. So the sum of quantity is in thousands, and the sum of revenue and the total contract value is in hundreds of thousands. So a clustered column chart would not work in this case because the other two fields are in hundreds of thousands. So how do we visually represent this kind of data? Let me select a clustered column chart first. Hit OK. So the chart is visible. Now we don't see quantity in our chart. So in order to show the quantity as well, here's what I need to do. So I'll hit the plus sign, click on the format axis, and I'll click on more options over here. Now in the axis options, as I want to update the sum of quantity series, I'll hit sum of quantity, and I can select the secondary axis that will pop up over here. So what this will do is, I will also be able to see the sum of quantity on the secondary axis. As you will notice, the sum of quantity is currently being plotted on the primary axis, which is in hundreds of thousands of dollars. So quantity being in thousands is not visible at all. So let's select secondary axis. And now the quantity is also visible per product. Let me make this bigger. We now see the quantity, but it does look a bit odd. The quantity column bars are extremely broad as compared to the sum of revenue and the sum of total contract value. So we can reduce the gap width by typing our preferred gap width over here. It's currently 199%. And that's why it's wider than the other series that we have. Let's reduce the gap width to 5%. Let's see how it looks. Much better. The gap width has now reduced. And we can now clearly see that when we talk about the thermal imaging camera, we have over 500 units of thermal imaging cameras, 516 to be exact. And then we have the super tracker, the software license, and so forth. We hardly have any GPS trackers, so the company might want to order some more GPS trackers to have some inventory on hand. So using the clustered column chart, you can visually see what the status is of revenue, total contract value, and quantity by product. Let's have a look at some other charts. So if I click back on the pivot table and I go to the pivot chart option, you can also create a line chart. Let's see how that looks like. I'll just move this to the right. We have a line chart over here. And for this line chart, let's say, for example, we are interested in products across all contract lengths. So there is a filter button over here. I click on this filter button and I select the other contract lengths which were not selected previously. I hit OK. And now everything is unfiltered. So just by unfiltering the data in one chart, all the data is unfiltered. In the pivot table, you can see that the contract duration now shows all. Please note that we have the same issue over here. The sum of quantity now needs to be plotted on a secondary axis. Everything in the line graph is being plotted on the primary axis. So you can easily fix that. The same way we fix the first chart. Another commonly used pivot chart is the pie chart. So if I go back to the pivot table analyze option and I hit pivot chart, I can select the pie option and I can hit okay. And now you have the sum of revenue 
by product. If you hover over the various colors, you can see the values. So the blue represents 9% of the total value or $78,493. What if we want to see these amounts in the chart? We don't want to hover over them to identify what the amounts are. So we can easily add those by clicking on the plus sign here and adding data labels. If you want to do it in percentage terms, you click over here, you select more options, you go on label options, and you select the percentage option, which has been unchecked. You check it, so the percentages are now being shown in the chart. If you just want to see percentages, just uncheck value, and you get percentages in your chart. If some of the values are not visible, you can either move it outside the chart or you can change the colors and make them lighter so you can clearly see the numbers. Pivot charts are extremely easy to work with. They make data analysis very convenient. In this module, we discussed three of the most commonly used pivot charts, namely clustered column, line graph, and a pie chart. With a little practice, you can create meaningful charts and process your data. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.